I've spent 10 years learning motion design, and today I'm going to reveal everything that I wish somebody told me when I first started. This is a combination of all my learnings and mistakes, as well as years of talking to and learning from other creatives. No matter how far along you are in your career, I want to save you years of your life figuring this out for yourself. The first step is one of the most important, but also one of the most overlooked. And I'll be honest, it's something I'm still guilty of to this day. Many beginners, and sometimes those who might be a little more experienced, go straight into opening After Effects and trying to create an animation. Nine times out of ten, this won't go very well. To put this in perspective, imagine a client came to you and said, I want you to animate something for me, but I don't know what. You'd be quite confused and asking questions about what the message of their project is and exactly what they're trying to communicate in order to form your own brief. This should be no different for your own projects too. Understanding your concept, doing your research into different visual styles and storyboarding your project is absolutely vital. It helps you to understand exactly what you're trying to achieve, makes you think about certain design choices and can even help smooth out problem areas that you might not have anticipated. However, while creating your concepts, it's easy to think about how technical and complex you can make things. But there's something else that you should consider first. Software changes quickly, but good design principles stay the same. It's really important to understand basic design theory, and that does mean expanding your skill set from just After Effects. Everything from your composition to your colour and typography can really impact the feel of your work. For instance, take a look at these two banking names that I've just created. I'm not so sure you'd trust the one written in Comic Sans quite as much as the nice serif font. And the same goes for your animation too. A good motion designer is more than just understanding the software. It's knowing why things work and what makes them look better. So while technical skills matter, they should be built on a strong foundation of design and animation principles. Always remember, you can't out-animate bad design. Now, although people often focus too much on the technical skills for getting new work, the next step is often one of the most disregarded, but can be one of the most effective in landing new clients, connections, and of course, jobs. To put this in perspective, let's imagine a scenario with two different motion designers. Person A can produce some stunning animations but they're not a team player. They refuse to take anyone's advice and put their own creative vision above what the client actually needs. However, person B is okay at motion design, but is an exciting person to be around. They're willing to take feedback and are open to explaining why things may or may not work. They offer client solutions to any problems, all in order to make the process as smooth as possible and keep the client happy. Between those two people, who do you think is more likely to work with that client again? I hope you said B. Surprisingly, it's not just about how good your animation skills are. It also boils down to how well you can communicate and fit together in a team. While people skills are vital, communication can also extend to your projects and your workflow. For instance, if you're in a studio environment or send your project files off to anyone else, and that person opens your After Effects project, only to be greeted by this. I've got news for you, and it's not good. As Ben Marriott says, we always label our layers. It was a pretty bad impression, but you get what I'm going for. Nobody wants to dive into your project file and just waste a whole day trying to figure out what on earth is going on and find the exact layer they're looking for. Make sure you keep things in named folders, named precomps, and named layers even down to your mats and nulls. That's right, you. I know you don't do it. Now, despite taking all of these points into consideration, there's one I've missed that's perhaps the most important of them all. When you're scrolling for Instagram and you see someone's work and think, what kind of wizard magic is this? Well, why don't you have a go and recreate it? And don't look at me like that. Try and break things down frame by frame, and I guarantee that you'll learn more doing that than any tutorial can ever teach you. But simply having a go at an effect or animation you saw, trying to work out why a project made you feel the way it did or how a certain effect was achieved will teach you so much. And if you get stuck, don't be afraid to ask questions because you can never ask too many. And once you start getting feedback on your work, you need to leave your ego at the door. I'll be honest, after 10 years, I still need to work on this because no one likes being told that their work doesn't look great or something needs changing. My point is, 
you can always learn something new. And it's important that you never stop learning if you want to be a fantastic motion designer. When trying these things, don't be upset if you can't get it right, because it really doesn't matter. And I'll let Bruce Lee tell you why with point number six. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And quite rightly, you might be sat there wondering what on earth Bruce Lee has to do with motion design. Well, you should always remember it's better to practice one thing over and over again rather than trying to come up with one perfect project. You need to understand that whatever you make will never be perfect. If it is, it'll probably only last about five minutes before you hate it and see something that you want to change again. With motion design, perfectionism isn't the goal, but learning is. And understanding when you've spent enough time trying to perfect one project is vital. You'll learn much more by simply moving on to the next one. Now, while I hope you'll remember at least some of what I've covered in this video, if there's one thing I want you to always remember, it's this last point. This is probably one of the hardest things to come to terms with as a motion designer. Even after a decade in this field, I still feel like I have so much to learn and explore. The world of motion design is huge and it's impossible to learn everything, but that's okay. Motion design is constantly changing and evolving, but that's what keeps it fun and exciting. You'll begin to learn your strengths over time and be able to build your work and portfolio around them to get hired for the work that you enjoy doing the most. Remember, the most important thing is this. Some people are naturally talented, but perfecting your craft doesn't happen overnight. Embrace the journey, keep learning, and don't be too hard on yourself along the way. Now, earlier I mentioned that learning more than just technical skills can be extremely powerful, but there's something I've briefly touched on in this video that will have a bigger impact on your progression than you might think. So check out this video where I'll show you what it is and exactly how it can help you progress 10 times faster than you are now.